Um, I'm back with Dr. Neil Goucher. We're going to talk about hiatal hernias uh, as a cause for chest pain that we should be thinking about in the ED. So, you know, someone comes in with chest pain, sure, we're going to get an EKG. We're going to probably rule out ACS with some troponin, et cetera. But part of that, we will get a chest X-ray um, as well. And one thing to think about is a hiatal hernia is something that could be causing reflux, abdominal pain, and also chest pain. Um, tell, tell us a little bit about uh, hiatal hernias. How do you go about diagnosing them and staging them? So I think in, from the ER standpoint, you know, again, as you said, you've got to rule out the things that are going to be life-threatening, the, the, the acute coronary syndromes, the PEs. Um, but once those things have been ruled out, it's not uncommon being on the kind of receiving end of this where someone has a hiatal hernia that may be of significant size that might be the cause of their symptoms. So, you know, there are different uh, types of hiatal hernias. So a sliding or type one hiatal hernia is where the, just the very top part of the stomach may be in the mediastinum. Uh, the G-junction, and those are 20% of folks are walking around with a small hiatal hernia, and those, again, are not usually urgent indications for anything to be okay. done. But if more of that is in the stomach, so if they have a type 2 or a type 3 hiatal hernia, so a type 2 is where the GE junction is below the mediastinum, or below the diaphragm, excuse me, but the fundus may be herniated, or okay. type 3 hernia is where both of the GE junction and other parts of the stomach are above mediastinum, okay. are in the mediastinum. Those, again, might be a cause for their pain. Um, and they may have been walking around with it for years or decades sometimes, um, and it only may get to the point where they show up to the emergency room if they have a volvia. Volvulus. So if they have a gastric volvulus related to the hernia, then that may present with chest pain. It's usually associated with nausea, vomiting, you know, intractability of oral intake, things like that. Um, but those are the things. If it's if it, even if they're not showing signs of acute volvulus, if everything else has been ruled out, but they show signs of those larger hernias, um, then that might require at least surg outpatient surgical evaluation with someone that treats parasophageal hernias. Got it. So there's type one, type two, and type three. Now, certainly when I get a routine chest X-ray on someone, I do see those dramatic hiatal hernias. Yeah. Is a chest X-ray good enough to, you know, at least screen or diagnose for hiatal hernias or how do you make that diagnosis? So I think if the chest X-ray shows that big gastric bubble or other, you know, stigmata of a large hiatal hernia, then I do think a chest CT is going to be the best test. You know, again, if you're if it's really for chest pain and if you're worried about a PE, then you're going to be doing that for that reason anyway. Uh, and that'll be more than enough to uh, adequately identify what type of hiatal hernia this may be. Uh, and there is a type four as well, where they, you know, the entire stomach may be up there, but there may be other abdominal contents up there, the spleen, the transverse colon, the pancreas, wow. I mean, anything can sneak up there. Um, again, these are usually chronic conditions that have just gotten to that point. Um, but yeah, I think a chest CT is going to be the indication for if you see any, if there's chest pain that you just can't put your finger on that you can't understand or a chest x-ray that shows that that gastric dilatation in the chest. So then you'd progress to a CT. Um, does it need, to, can it be a dry CT? Uh, you know, yeah. Yeah. You're an anatomy there. Exactly. You're just, it's, when they happen, they're not subtle uh, when they're the big ones like that. So, and then I, the question becomes, does it require something, you know, that, that admission, or is it something that can be dealt with on a more elective basis? And I think if they're able to be, if they're not acutely, you know, having a volvulus where they can't eat or drink, uh, most of the time, if they can be PO challenged, if they have an outpatient follow-up plan with either GI or a surgeon that specializes in, in these types of hernias, um, they don't necessarily need admission. But uh, I think identification and knowing what type they are and how severe they are can dictate what the next step should be. And the classic presentations for these hernias, well, what symptoms are patients going to be presenting with? So if it's a, a, again, a type three or type two or something you know, bigger uh, parasophageal, they often come in with chest pain. They may come in with nausea, vomiting. They may come in with regurgitation uh, or severe heartburn. It's interesting, you know, these patients typically are, in, again, in their 80s and 90s, so they've been dealing with it for years or decades sometimes. So they may not have classic heartburn symptoms or classic um, epigastric symptoms or chest symptoms because they've just been managing it with eating small meals and sort of you know, dealing with it without really knowing what the problem was. Um, but when they get to the point where they can't tolerate PO intake, when they're having the retching, certainly if they've got hematemesis, um, those are big red flags for working up further. Um, and then one of the uh, common things may be 
again, sometimes in the air, but often more of a chronic condition is if they've got ulcers or chronic gastritis because of the, the intermittent volvulus that they get. And when that happens, they, they can develop what are called Cameron's ulcers, which are intermittent because of the intermittent ischemia that's happening with these alveolus, you get these Cameron's ulcers that look like any other ulcer, but they are probably related to a parasophageal hernia because of that intermittent volvulus. Uh, and that, again, can cause chronic anemia and other uh, GI issues that would be identified on an endoscopy. Gotcha. Great. Any Anything else you want to say about um, these type of parasophageal hernias? It's just, again, or if if you've done the cardiac workup, you've done the chest workup, and there's no other explanation for these patients, it can save them a lot of heartache, a lot of follow-up if they are just, if they know they have a hiatal hernia, getting them referred to either gastroenterology or, or surgery to, to identify it and deal with it. Great. Um, one other question, I'm not sure if we'll be able to use this, but is there a certain cut, like, is it like grade two and above, you're going to surgically repair grade one, you're not, or is that so, so type one hiatal hernias, like the sliding type hiatal hernias, we're really only operating on those because that's the most that twenty percent of patients have that. We're only going to operate on those if they are severe enough with the reflux symptoms. So it's really for the reflux that we'd be treating that that type of hernia. If it's a type two, type three, or type four, the the recommendation really is to treat them because of the risk of acute gastric volvulus and the fact that they're not going to get better with non-surgical interventions. Got it. All right. Thank you so much. This was amazing. You're welcome. Thank you for having me.